in Jude verse number three, the scriptures has this to say, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Father, I pray that you will bless the preaching of your word tonight. Lift up the Lord Jesus Christ before us. Speak to all of our hearts. In his name we pray, amen. In this simple verse of scripture, most all preachers that I've ever heard zero in on the latter part of this verse where he is exhorting them to earnestly contend for the faith. But tonight, <clears throat> the Lord has impressed on me to deal with the opening part of the verse. And I want you to notice these words for a few minutes of time tonight because they're very important and they encourage us in the Lord Jesus. He opens up with the word beloved. When you look at that word, ladies and gentlemen, it's pretty obvious that there was a close connection that Jude had with these other believers that he's writing to. When I look at that word, it indicates clearly to me what needs to be in our churches and our lives tonight. Every single person in this room, you ought to be close to those brothers and sisters of yours in the faith. Now, there may be some differences of opinion, personalities, and things of this nature. But if we're truly the children of God, we ought to be close to one another in that realm. Now notice what he does in this verse. He said, <clears throat> when I gave all diligence, I looked up the word diligence. I was concerned about what it really meant. And when I found that word there in the Greek dictionary, I was amazed to see the word that he used to define it. He used the word eagerness. And then I began to ponder over what he was trying to do. Jude here loved these believers. He believed in what they were doing there. And he was so eager to write to them concerning this salvation in Christ Jesus that they had in common. When he looked at what was going on in this area, he was overwhelmed with excitement and joy. He saw these believers just going through the trenches, being faithful and lifting up the name of Christ. He saw the heartache and the pain and that they were enduring there. And yet they just continued right on doing that. This excited him to the extent that he writes to them and says, in the beginning, I wanted to write to you with unbelievable eagerness on my part to commend you for what I see you're doing. I want to ask you tonight this simple question. Are you still eager in the work of the Lord? I'd be honest with you. And I've got to use this message to really convict my own heart. I got home this afternoon and I was so worn out. I mean, I, I went to my study and the Lord had already given me that thought and I've been dealing with other messages this week and talking with pastors this morning uh, before the services all started. And I tell you, everything in me was just being pulled out. I didn't feel like I had nothing left to give. And when I got home, I, I was uh, informed this morning that Nick was going to video tonight's service. And I got to praying and hoping, Lord, when Nick gets home, let him be as tired as I am. Let, let him say, Pastor, I wanted to video it with all my heart. But I, I had a rough day at, at work today, and I just don't think I could do it. And I t shared that with my wife, and she came in about 20 minutes before we had to leave. And uh, she came to the house, and she said, in that wonderful, encouraging voice she's got, I am so tired. And boy, that reinforced the tiredness that was in my life. And I shared with her what I had been thinking. You know, maybe Nick's going to be so tired he's not up to it either. And But when I turned in the driveway down there, I looked up and I saw that little bright blue PT cruiser. And I said, Deb, he's already here. 
and she just let out this war hoop of a cackle, and we just rejoiced coming up the driveway. I reached over and got her hand, and I said, Dear God, would you fill us tonight with strength and energy and power from on high. And not only us, but there are multitudes of people in this church that have been ministering to other families who are hurting this week. And I said, Lord, I know they are tired as well. Would you just touch them and give them the strength and energy that they need? And all of a sudden, eagerness began to flood back into my heart. And I want to tell you, I may be tired and I may be wore out, but I'm eager to deliver this message to you tonight. We ought to have the eagerness of God in our soul about what we see going on in the lives of other believers, how they are engaging in the work of God, how they don't seemingly ever wear out or tire down. They just keep going on and on and on. And there's something in their heart that says, Lord, no matter what, I gotta keep going. And that's the kind of people that he's writing to right here. And they encouraged and inspired this great man to pin these verses down. So I want to ask you, are you still eager about the work of the Lord? I mean, are you chomping at the bits to just be able to do something for him? When was it? Monday night, Steve was at uh, Carter Funeral Home. And uh, we were trying to minister with others to the family there to encourage them, let them know the Lord loves them. He's with them through this loss of a loved one. And right before we got ready to leave, most everybody had done left, a lady that uh, works at the Dairy Queen came to me and said, Brother Johnny, my husband would like to speak with you for a minute or two if you have time. And I said, Sure. So uh, she took me to him, and he was sitting over the, in the room uh, in a corner, and he said, Johnny, could, could we go in here where it's private? And I said, sure, let, let's go on in here. And I closed the door, and we sat down at that conference table. He looked at me and said, Johnny, Ernest's death has really been weighing on my heart. It's been convicting me and dealing with me. And he looked at me and said, and I want you to know, I do not want to die empty and I called him by name and I said uh, well let me ask you a question if me and you both were to fall over dead in this floor right now would we be in heaven and he said I wouldn't and I said there's the problem That's what we've got to deal with first. Because he had done told me, he said, I've got so much on my shoulders, it's just weighing me down. He said, and I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. And he said, I have no answers to the problems in my life. And I said, the number one problem is your eternal destiny. And if you will trust Christ as your Savior, He's promised you He will enter into your life. He will be there forever, never leave you. He will help you through the struggles of life. And I said to him, I want you to know that this is where we need to start. I explained the gospel to him with all the renewed energy and vigor and earnestness that I had. And then I looked at him and I said, now tell me. Would you not right now be willing to trust Christ as your Savior? He looked at me without any hesitation and said, yes, I would. And so we prayed together. He prayed and received Christ as his Savior and called his wife in the room and said, honey, I just trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Praise God. Amen. I'm telling you, I was tired Monday night. But the Lord gave me the eagerness to go talk to this man. Listen, that's what it's all about. And I pray to God I never lose that. And I hope you don't either. It's like uh, little kids standing in line to get free candy. You know, you know how that, you ever seen that happen? They get so eager, man, they bump one another and get closer and closer to the person handing out that candy. And if you're not careful, they'll knock one another out of the line and get in their place to just move up a little bit. 
We ought to have that kind of eagerness. And when Jude wrote to them, he said, I wanted to write to you to start with about this salvation that we have in common. This morning, sitting in a pastor's office, he began to share with me what he's been doing for the last 12 months where he is located now. And he said, Brother Johnny, we finished a study the other day and he said, I didn't plan it this way, but somehow God just worked it all out. What we're going to do next builds on the very last verse of the book that we just got through preaching and it's just flowing into it and we're trying to pull the whole church together to rally around one common thing and that is Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And I thought to myself, you may not have planned it that way, but Jesus certainly did. Because he knows the only thing that will put eagerness back in a church is for himself to be lifted up. And when he's lifted up, he's promised he'd draw all men unto himself. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. If you've lost the eagerness of serving Christ, then as the song says, lift your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And all the things of this world will grow strangely dim. And that's true. Jude, when he heard of what was going on, man, he just wanted to get in on it. When I see people really serving the Lord, when I see people growing in grace, it just makes me want to get up there beside them and let a little of that rub off on me. Amen. Amen. That's excitement. I need that. At 63 years old, I need a lot of things, but I really need excitement back in my heart that I had when I was 20 years of age. I don't know that this old body could stand it, but what a way to go, amen. Amen. Let me ask you tonight, are you still eager to serve? I heard Charles Stanley say one time, there are two things he's found that no church ever has enough of. He said, one is money. I talked to myself, Dr. Sandy, you're in one of the largest churches in the country. Why is it that y'all don't have enough money? He said, we never have had enough money. And we have never had enough people to serve and fill the vacancies in the church. And I talked with the thousands of people in attendance. Why don't you? Then I realized that that old principle that says 20% of the people in any given congregation are the ones who do the work. 20%. What happened to the 80? They lost their eagerness. They lost it. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Don't you realize tonight with me that it is a privilege to be able to serve the Lord. To just do something for Him. And just watch Him bless your life and effort for it. It is a thrill of a lifetime to see him use us like he does. And folks, listen, if he can use somebody like me, just a knot on the law, think about what he could do with you if you just let him put that eagerness back. Oh, Lord, just give me something to do. Who was it in the the Bible who went to Moses and said, Moses... You promised me that mountain for my inheritance. And he said, now we're over here or about to cross over. Then when they got over there, he reminded Joshua of it and said, give me that mountain. Now, why didn't he ask for flat land? Why didn't he ask for something to be a whole lot easier? Why did he look at that mountain and say, man, that's going to be difficult to conquer and whip? Look at the strongholds they probably got in caves in that mountain. But that's what he wanted. That's what old Caleb wanted. And he said, give me that mountain. I never will forget years ago when Jerry Falwell first went to the church there in Lynchburg, Virginia, the Thomas Road Baptist Church. I remember hearing him in the 70s say that he was so burdened about his community in this town 
that he went up on the mountain and looked down over Lynchburg and said, God, by faith I'm claiming this city for Jesus Christ. Today it's the world's largest Christian school. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe you and I with eagerness in our heart ought to read verse 3 and say, Beloved, when I gave all eagerness to write unto you of the common salvation we share and ask the Lord to put the eagerness back in our heart and guard it and don't let Satan steal it from us again. It's easy to get discouraged but I found in the latter part of my life that it's easy for me to discourage my own self by just looking at all these things around me and saying it's impossible. Let me share this illustration with you. A shoe company sent one of their representatives to a foreign country that was known for going barefoot. He got over there and saw that nobody had shoes. He wrote back and said, get me home. Nobody over here wears shoes. And so they brought him back. Another young fellow joined that company's ranks and he said, I want to go where the opportunity is great and unprecedented. So they sent him to this country. And he got over there and wrote back and said, hey, Nobody over here wears shoes. Send me everything you got. It's all in how you look at it. It's either a blessing or a curse. I was talking with a man last night or the other night, I've forgotten, my nights are running together, and their church has just been supernaturally blessed. What we would say. A lady died, didn't go to that church, and left them $2 million. 34 acres of land and a house. And I was talking with one of the members that used to be one of my members when I was at Bethel, and I asked him about that, and he said, Brother Johnny, there's one of two things that's going to happen. And I said, well, what is that? He said, it's either going to turn out to be a great blessing or it's going to turn out to be a tremendous curse to us. And it's all depending upon how the leadership handles what God has given. Ooh, and then he quoted a verse of scripture to me and then said, where Jesus said, to whom much is given, much is required. Whew, I've been praying for him since that night. That God would grant them supernatural wisdom and a clear, clear revelation of what He wants done. Because if they miss this, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to miss a large part of their future. I say to you that if we miss the eagerness in our life that God wants us to have, we may very well miss a lot of our future. So let's ask the Lord, to put the eagerness back in our heart to serve Him. I feel good now. Amen. Praise the Lord. And when we say amen in a minute, it may all leave me. But boy, the eagerness is there right this second. So if you would, would you bow your heads with me tonight, please? Father, I thank you for the power of your word and the ability that it has and possesses to change situations in individuals, lives, and corporate numbers of people's lives throughout the communities and even the nation and world. There is no limit to the power of your word. And tonight I pray, oh God, oh God, let it bring the eagerness back to us again to serve you with great joy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.